Welcome to this week in review. Tonight's stories include LOI Seniors Party, Best Decorated Houses, School Report, these stories plus the BBS Playbill, Off the Rack, and more coming up after this. When you use a War Amps key tag, you support child amputees like Morgan. This busy girl wears two artificial legs and a myoelectric arm. She has learned from the experiences of war amputees like Cliff Chatterton. Through the years, the War Amps has been there, easing her path on the road to independence. Your donations to the Key Tag Service have helped put Morgan in the winner's circle. Even though it's hard to do something, you keep on trying. Don't give up at all. On Tuesday, January the 3rd, the LOA hosted their annual Seniors Christmas Party. Approximately 99 seniors attended the party, which began at 6 p.m. Members of the LOA served their guests at roast beef supper with jello and fruit for dessert. MC Joyce Green welcomed everyone and invited Reverend Dean Sellers to say grace over the meal. After the meal was finished and everyone was enjoying dessert and tea, the two oldest seniors, Mrs. Gertie Parson and Mr. Don Bedridge, were asked to cut the cake. MC Joyce introduced the Ed Table guests. Joyce also then brought greetings on behalf of the LOL, RBP, and the LOBA. She also brought regrets on behalf of Mayor Reed, who was out of town and unable to attend the event. LOBA, where the Mr. Biddy Strickland presented Mrs. Parsons with a gift, and Art Parsons, master of the LOL, presented Mr. Don Bedridge with a gift. Supper concluded with return thanks by Reverend Hubert Vallis and the singing of the Hold to Newfoundland. Once the dishes were cleaned away, the seniors enjoyed a few ends of cards. After about eight rounds, the winners were announced. The first place winner with 890 points was Fred Wells. Second place winner was Max Collier with 725 points. 
The third prize went to Sim Bellard with 340 points. Then the lights were turned down low for some dancing. Santa and Mrs. Claus dropped by for a visit, at a dance, and delivered some gifts. Once the gifts were handed out, Santa and Mrs. Claus lift as, after a quick goodbye. Then the mummers dropped by. After the mummers lift, the dancing continued with music by Travis. Since I held you a call behind, and we waited for the sun to shine on a great happy day. On Wednesday, January 4th, Lions President Tony Bungay presented the awards for the best decorated homes for 2005. On behalf of the Lions Club, I would like to thank everyone who lighted up again this year. The winners this year are third place, Egder Bellard. There you go. Congratulations. Are you staying over here? Second place, Gerald McDonald. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And first place, Claude Strickland. There you go. Thanks. Congratulations. I'd like to congratulate the winners. I would also like to thank the judges for a job well done. Thank you. Drivers are encouraged to use extra caution and vigilance on all roads throughout the winter months. Some safety tips for people to keep in mind this winter include never pass a snowplow, ensure your vehicle is equipped with winter tires and the defroster and windshield wipers are in good working condition. Dress warmly or pack extra clothing in the event of an unexpected winter weather emergencies. Always wear your seatbelt. Do not travel in poor weather conditions. Check the forecast and the department website for the latest road conditions before heading out. Carry a cell phone and make sure someone is aware of your travel route. Always carry jumper cables, flares, or reflectors, an ice scraper, traction material, blankets, non-perishable food items, windshield washer fluid, and a first aid kit in your vehicle. For more information, the latest road conditions, and the government live highway cameras, visit www.roads.gov.nl.ca. Now over to Corey Penny, principal of the Burgio Academy, with the school report. New man. And happy New Year to you. And happy New Year to you and to uh, those that's watching. Uh, the news tonight. Okay. Um, I understand you have a, a variety of topics you want to cover today, so... Well, it seems like, again, it's uh, been a while since we've met, and uh, since the last time we've met, it's uh, been a, um, a number of things have happened. Uh, Christmas just got over it, so uh, it's now two days since kids went back to school, so uh, they're certainly, uh, as well as teachers, I guess, excited to be back, but um, still feel like I guess we didn't have a long enough holiday, but uh, I, I guess that's that's the way it goes. Um, but again, as I said, I want to wish everyone a happy new year and uh, certainly all the best uh, in the next 12 months. Before Christmas, um, we had another very uh, um, successful, exciting Christmas concert and the awards night. So I certainly want to thank everyone who uh, attended both of those. Uh, the kids did really well in the Christmas concert. Um, and again, a, a fine crowd was there. Uh, again, the awards night, usually the numbers are a little less for that. But uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, the awards night went very well uh, with the... Uh, I guess we missed uh, Mr. Durham for this year, but uh, I guess he has gone on and retired, and I guess he's enjoying his time in, in Calgary right now, I hear. But uh, the other teachers came on and uh, I guess did his part, and overall um, there were some good comments with the night, so we're very, very pleased with that. Also on the last day of school before Christmas holidays, uh, we had a, a breakfast program. Um, the snack ladies uh, again prepared breakfast for, uh, I was told was, uh, over 100 uh, uh, students and, and teachers that attended, I believe a number of teachers attended, 
and uh, that again was very successful and certainly a big thank you to uh, to all those ladies uh, for preparing that and getting things ready. Uh, I know it's a lot of work and if I'm not mistaken I think they were in about 7.30 that morning and uh, they were here well into uh, 11, 11.30 that day so uh, a good job by them. Just again um, the parking from the school, it, it's getting better but uh, still some things that um, some people are not filling up the parking spaces uh, like they should, uh, still parking on the side of their parking lot where they, uh, they should be filling up their parking spaces to allow the flow of traffic a little a little better, so I certainly ask uh, the That's the regular the ones with the yellow lines? Yes, okay. they, if they fill up those first and um, kind of just cut down the congestion. Uh, dinner times obviously is the rush, time. the rush time to get out and get back, but uh, in two or three minutes most uh, everybody's gone, the kids and everything, so uh, just again keep that in mind. I'm also very pleased, very excited to say that uh, the cadets are, are back uh, are back in and uh, they're up and running and uh, I think we missed them with the, uh, the Remembrance Day weekend and certainly with the, the Christmas concert so uh, again we're very pleased to have them back and uh, I think, thank, uh, well thanks to the, the leaders that's come forth to, uh, to do that and if I'm not mistaken, um, right now I believe we have 38 kids that uh, have signed up and that's the numbers that I get right now. So that's, uh, that's extremely good considering we only have about uh, there's only about 90 that you can pull out of that anyway so 30 or 90 is, is, is not bad. Uh, there were some talks um, that the individual CRT results from last year were supposed to be in the end of November. Uh, some parents have questioned about those and as of as to date I have not earned, heard anything about those so uh, either the delay is at the, the Department of Education or at our school board but uh, Either way, uh, we have not received those, and once we do, they will be um, packaged and sent out uh, as soon as possible. Also, since we last met, um, we've had presentations by uh, a Boolean presentation by the RCMP. Uh, Constable Moran was in and spoke to the kids in K-6, to and that was uh, one hour, uh, one morning in November, late November, as well as uh, he spoke to the grade sevens that afternoon. And uh, a presentation well done. Uh, kids seemed to enjoy it. They had a, a lot of questions, so uh, very successful. Uh, also, within the last week of November, we had a, a lady from the uh, School Milk Federation was out and did a presentation to K-6 students on healthy living. Um, obviously, uh, looking at nutrition and drinking milk and everything else. And uh, she was a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I know it was a retired teacher or a former teacher, and uh, the kids really enjoyed it, and, and so did the teachers. And uh, they had nothing but all, all good comments about it, so uh, uh, and again, a job well done there. Um, I don't know if I missed anything from the last time we spoke or not. I'm sure a lot more have happened, but uh, I apologize if I missed anything. It's coming up, uh, we've got uh, our midterm exams. That's certainly the thing that's uh, very close upon us right now. Uh, that's the week of January the 23rd to the 27th. Uh, now in the past, uh, midterm exams have been for students in grades 7 to 12. Uh, they've always written it in the gymnasium. And provincial policy now states that the only students allowed uh, to write in the gymnasium are allowed downtime. Um, and what I mean by that is like, students can write an exam in the morning and have the afternoon off to study. The only students allowed to do that now are 10, 11, and 12. Um, that's not school policy. It is done right across the province. That means that junior high students will not have any downtime during that week. They can do exams. They can do them in the classroom. So um, if they got a math exam or a language exam, if it's an hour or an hour and a half, uh, they will do them in class. Once their exam is finished, they will carry on with their normal subjects. Now, for the final exam, it will go back to the, uh, the original, I guess, situation in the past that uh, they are allowed to write in the gym and they will get the afternoons or whatnot if, if that comes up to, to study for their exams. But uh, again, it's provincial policy and um, certainly if there's any questions on that. Well, what, was the, what, would be the, what was the main reason for that then? The main, the main reason is that they feel that um, some of the younger students, um, again, now what's the difference between a grade 9 and a grade 10 student, that could be argued, but uh, the main reason is that uh, the students in grade 7, 8, and 9 are missing too much school time. Okay. Um, I, I think it's safe to say that that wasn't a real problem here in Burgill, but from what I hear is that a lot of schools outside um, were taking too many days for that. So I guess what they came up with was, came up with was one policy that said, this is what every school got to do. And like I said, that may be right, may be wrong, but it's not, not for me to say, but yeah. uh, we have no other choice on that. So uh, that's where it's to, and um, so like I said, for that week, 
seven, eight, nines will still have some exams, but it won't be like it was in the past. Okay. And again, as I said, if parents got uh, any questions concerned with that, uh, by all means, give their teacher a call or, or give the school a call, and we'll uh, certainly try to straighten up any uh, any questions there. The only other thing that I have left um, is right now every school in the province are asked to do over the next year or so something called a school development plan. And basically what that is is a plan, three to five year plan, looking at all aspects of the school life. Uh, academics, student behavior, um, participation, various activities and whatnot. And uh, before Christmas, um, actually the teachers and myself have met um, three different times and right now we're looking on uh, student behavior. And while we're not completely satisfied with behavior in the school and uh, again before I go any further I'll say that uh, I believe we got some really good students really good kids and uh, certainly I would compare them uh, even probably put them up better than uh, most schools in the province but with that said um, still some issues that um, kind of need to tighten up what's been happening around school um, in their agendas for students in grade 7 to 12 um, the rules and that's are stated uh, so I mean if, if parents Want to see those? Just ask the kids for their agendas. Uh, I believe it's page 12 to page 15. This is list all the rules. Um, and what we're doing, just taking a look at um, as teachers and as administrators and students to make sure we're following those rules. And if the rules are broken, then there's consequences put in place. So I had met with the students uh, first day back uh, after Christmas. I met with the 10 to 12 students uh, the first hour, and the second hour was the 7 to 9 students. Uh, K to 6 um, will be done at, at a later time. But uh, again, just outline some of the rules that we have. Uh, not a lot there was new. Um, teachers are now recording um, all the misbehaviors. And uh, at the end of the week, that's coming in, in to me. And uh, just kind of giving us an idea of what's been happening during the weeks. So uh, students were probably a little bit taken back, first, first day back, um, that being thrown at them. But uh, we felt it was necessary. And uh, we're going to go from there and certainly evaluate that after every three or four weeks to see how that's going. The one probably new one or an extension of one that we have is um, the dress dress code I guess here at school. Um, specifically states that students should not be coming to school with, um, and this is in their agenda, uh, with beer logos, beer advertisements on, on any of their clothing, uh, any sexual connotations, anything that, that's I guess deemed inappropriate. And the one that we're asking also is then the dress of um, of males and females, but probably more so along the females of um, we don't want any skin showing, uh, I guess belly buttons in the back area, so uh, if if we see clothing that we're not satisfied with, um, then we'll be asking students to go home to change. So um, again, I'm sure there's going to be, or there could be some concerns, some comments on that, but again, parents feel free to, to contact me and I'll, I'll certainly clarify best I can. Uh, we kind of look at it as clothing that's appropriate for a public building. I mean, if they're out walking around outside, if they go to a dance at the lodge or whatever, uh, it's different Different rules. You come to school, it's different rules. <coughs> you go to church, it's different rules. And we just want to kind of get back to uh, to following those. So uh, that's all that I have. I don't know if you have any um, questions or... Uh, well, when you talked about the rules in your classroom and some of the things that the teachers are noting, um, just give us a quick example off top of your head if you can think about one one of those problems that you could see I'll say problem for lack of a better term but something that we can improve on as a school in behavior yeah um, to me it's just um, I think one of the big things is just respect okay I think it's just respect of, of the way students speak to each other yes the uh, way students speak to teachers and the way teachers speak to students okay. I mean yeah. we're all human and I'm not saying that uh, that we're always right uh, I mean, we all make mistakes, but it's it's a matter of everybody coming together and following the rules. And and, and if if we break them, then we gotta we gotta deal with them. Okay. And uh, like I said, it's a little bit like I said at the first day coming back. It's a lot for students to take on, but nothing really that's new. Is just now going back and and tighten up what what we've done. Um, and the other things like uh, throwing snowballs and parking their bikes in front of the school that's blocking off the fire exit door, which is definitely not allowed. Just little things okay. that keeping things can be very yeah. serious, right? But yes. um, that's... Yeah. That's um, over the uh, Christmas holidays, too, um, I've heard some comments about kids having to come back to school so early in the new year. Okay. It, it, that really hasn't changed, or is it just the way the holidays fall? 
it's, it's really the way the holidays, I guess, fell. Um, when we started school on September the 6th, um, some schools started, that was on a, on a Tuesday, some school actually started the Friday before. Um, we get out, I believe it was the 22nd or 23rd. But throughout the year, um, students, teachers, whatever, we have an X number of holidays, whatever that is, 18, 20, whatever it is. Um, Christmas and Easter are using a full width. The other ones kind of can be, and what I mean by that is, at the end of every year, so sometime in June, the teachers in each school district will vote on a, um, an holiday schedule, I guess, for the, the previous or the, or the coming the year. The year yeah. it's coming up, yes. And um, then that vote is done, as I said, throughout the district. So whatever majority wins, that's that's when they go with. So if you go to another district, another district in Central, they went back to school. We came back on Tuesday, they went back on Wednesday. But that extra holiday will be taken away from where we have one, let's say, a long week in summer. Oh, okay. So okay. The, the number of days, the number of school days that we have to be here, it's, it's something like 187 teaching days. And that's got to be from September the 6th till June the 22nd. And that, that's there. And the holidays fall in place from there. Oh, okay. Right? But right. in other years, you might go back. I know in most cases it was 10, usually had 10 school days off for Christmas. That We only had seven this year. That's right. There's actually only one extra uh, above Easter. And that, that's very strange, but it's kind of the way things worked out. And um, Probably the days where the Christmas season fell, too, I would say. That, that, do, uh, yeah. that do cause a problem there, but uh, back with three or four years ago, um, there was five extra days added on from 190 to 195 days, and that kind of, I mean, if you, if you look back to last Christmas and Christmas before, it was also a little shorter than, than uh, the model was in, in previous years, too. Okay. So, unfortunate, but... Um, we, we were all on that boat, we had to come back. So. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for speaking with us. Thank you, ma'am. Stay tuned for more of this week in review coming up after this. When you wish. When you wish for something wonderful to happen. Sometimes it can make you forget. About the needles. And the pain. And get through this thing. Forget about being stuck inside. Laugh with my family? Go somewhere really amazing and get through this thing. The Children's Wish Foundation of Canada. Wishes are what we do. On old Christmas Day, Friday, January the 6th, the Lions and Lioness held their annual seniors party. Old Christmas Day is traditionally known as the last day of Christmas. The Lions and Lioness availed their seniors party on this day for many years. What a great ending to the Christmas season. Approximately 105 seniors attended the party. MC Alice Kosser seated the Ed Table guest, welcomed everyone, and invited Reverend Hubert Vallis to say blessing over the meal. Next on the agenda was the introduction of the Ed Table guest. MC Alice passed along regrets on behalf of Mayor Reed, who was out of town and unable to attend, and Deputy Mayor David McDonald, who was unable to attend due to the flu. Lion King Tony brought greetings on behalf of the Lions Club and thanked those who helped to prepare for the party. Lioness Alice brought greetings to all seniors on behalf of Lioness President Sheila Ingram, who was unable to attend due to illness. The two oldest seniors, Mrs. Gertie Parsons and Mr. Don Bowdridge, cut the cake. They were then presented with gifts. The winner of the door prize ticket draw was Annie McDonald. Supper concluded with return thanks by Reverend Dean Sellers. Then it was on to some serious card playing. The winners were Isaac Atcher was 740 points, second place Sim Bellard was 730 points, and in third place Annie McDonald with 365 points. Then the community center disco was turned up for some dancing. Shortly after the dancing began, Santa and Mrs. Claus dropped by for a little dance and with gifts for all the seniors. Once the gifts were distributed, the dancing resumed.
With winter upon us, many outdoor enthusiasts are eager to try out the ponds. However, with the fluctuating temperatures between plus and the minuses, thin ice can pro pose a serious threat. The Red Cross encourages everyone to be aware of the risks before eating out on the ice. People need to be aware that ice thickness may vary, so keeping your eyes and ears tuned to changes in ice conditions, such as weak or dark patches, is very important. Ensure adequate ice thickness before planning any activities. Ice should be 15 centimeters or 6 inches for walking or skating, 20 centimeters or 8 inches for a skating party or hockey, and 25 centimeters or 10 inches are recommended for snowmobiling. With all the mild weather we've been having, ice conditions in and around the Burjo area are not safe. It has been reported that during the Christmas break, hockey games were played on both ponds in town. Individuals were also seen on the ice with bicycles. These activities are very dangerous. If you are on the ice, here are a few safety tips to keep in mind. If there is water on the ice surface, it is not safe. Use a hockey stick, pole, rope, belt, or scarf to reach out to a person who has fallen in the ice. Try to avoid venturing on the ice yourself. If you must, roll or crawl out. Lay flat and stay a safe distance from the edge of the ice. Hypothermia is a silent killer. If hypothermia occurs, keep the victim warm, dry, and still. Take the patient to the hospital immediately and never give alcohol to a person with hypothermia. Be prepared before going outdoors and know what to do if the weather quickly changes. Dressing layers and wear, wear a hat. 60% of body heat is lost through the head. Check the weather forecast and always tell someone where you are going and when you will be back. Think twice before going out on any ice. The RCMP detachment has free of charge ice safety awareness booklets. Why not drop by and pick one up? Tuesday of this week, we visited the rec center to see how the project was coming along. It's been approximately six weeks since our last visit to the rec center. Most of the work that was slated to be done has been completed. The walls from the main entrance all the way back to the other end has been insulated and plywood has been painted. The rubber matting has been put down in both, both the original dressing rooms. You will notice that the matting is thicker, heavier, and made from a different material than the matting on the outside of the dressing rooms. Black matting has also been put down from each dressing room to the ice and ice surface and canteen. The yellow puck board has also been installed. Knit has been erected on the bleacher side of the rink all the way back to the new dressing room. The workers also dug a trench along this side of the building to allow for water drainage. Two of these stools have been built. When we visited, the workers were busy putting up more insulation over the canteen area. Plywood will cover the insulation here too. Some of the floor has been boarded over. This makes access to this area much easier. Workers were also painting the ticket office and doing some general cleaning. Since the project began, two people have become EI eligible and have moved on. Two more new workers have taken their place. Another worker will be finished up next week and two others will be finished up early in March. Once all the planned work has been completed, workers will be looking after the general skating, canteen, and the walking program. When we visited, we noticed that there was no ice. Workers told us that they had started, but the mild weather ruined it. Now they will have to begin again when we get some cooler temperatures. Stay with us for Off the Rack and the BBS Playbill, all after this. and I've used my artificial arm to play hockey. I went on the ice when I was four and I practiced and I practiced and I practiced and now I'm really, really good at it. The War Amps, for the love of the game. Off the rack. 
This week as we scanned our tape rack, we came across a tape of some seals around the coals in Burgio. Let's look back to January the 14th, 1996. Beans here tonight, the stars above are big and bright, but nothing seems to make things right when my lover's gone to see another night. I'll be alone and ask the Lord to send you home safely across the raging foam cause my lover's gone to see. I ask you Lord watch over him and send him back to me and when PBS Playbill. Try your luck on Wednesday by playing Rick Commission TV Bingo. On Thursday, we'll have a rebroadcast of the bandwagon from 1990. Join Pans in the Gang for two stories, a craft, and lots of fun on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on Pansy's Garden. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. Please stay tuned now for the bandwagon from 1990. For This Week in Review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night and God bless.